Hi everybody. Well, on Saturday night it was Telford Tigers who were the visitors to the Milton Keynes Arena. Let's go and see what happened. Milton Keynes Lightning fans, we're going to have a ceremonial putt drop now. Um, Benny Russell's taken the face off. It was actually Benny who introduced us to Jake, um, connected the dots for us, and really, uh, really has made this uh, this guy's campaign fantastic. Um, he's done a brilliant job. We're so delighted to support his campaign and support his cause. If you feel like you'd like to donate a chocolate selection box, you can do so online. You can go onto our shop, which is at shop.mk-lightning.co.uk and buy a selection box for £2.50. We'll go and buy that from a shop for you and we'll make sure it reaches Jake so that it can be distributed. We'll just pause for the next one. On the right D for Tigers. For Lightning, we've got the Stuart Cowley Leisure line with Jameson and Nags as the D pairing. Headley in goal, Days in goal for the Tigers. And we're off. Nagsy plays it back across over to Jameson and Lightning just looked to set up here on breakout. Cowley bringing it up. Turns it over to the Tigers team. And they're back going D to D, but Nags is always dangerous coming up and Stewart looks to bring it forward. Turns it over and uh, is there, making himself known. Jameson happy just to hit out the ice. Rose picked it up. Change. Rose laid off to Silverthorne. Silverthorne again into Aston. How many times have we said his name so far in this period? He seems to be everywhere. He does. Very good line there. Silverthorne, Mackenzie yeah. and Aston. Silverthorne, such a day. And Silverthorne brings it out. And that's, a, that's Aston. We've said his name so many times. He was all alone in this slot there. Was he, able to he pick the He sneaked in again. He did. It happened well, a couple of minutes ago. He's just sneaking in from the top of the slot. And there he is. We've been talking about him all the way through this period. He's been making himself uh, a nuisance in the lightning end. And eventually, I think uh, we'll wait to see who the pass was. It might have been Silverthorne behind the net. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. But Aston had ghosted him behind the lightning defenseman. And he was able just to pick it up. And that Knock shows a little bit of the uh, state of mind for lightning right now. Chamberlain just happy to dump it up. And Mitchell King's going to follow Good his stick. own puck in there and have a go. He was on his own and he went for it. It's going to take something like Norris getting in behind them there. That was a it's gone in, isn't it? Where is it? Oh, it hit the side of the pad and then... Wow. That was a strange one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. i got no idea quite what happened there. Where did it... Oh, he's caught inside of his blocker. Oh, there we go. So it kind of went up his stick, I think, or it rebounded up. For a moment, it looked like it went in for the yeah. gap of his leg pad. Yeah, uh, leg in front yeah. of him. But he's a good goalie. I doesn't yeah. take that away from him. Jameson and Nags combine in there to try and... Uh, just distribute the puck there. Nags is going to bring it round. He looks to take it up to, uh, nice to Norris. Play. Norris looks for Chamberlain, finds him in space. Chamberlain brings it in, takes a big shot, and he's, uh looks like he's caused some real, real damage, real pain on Goodison. What and there's Chamberlain there. there. Goodison had been taken out of the play with a shot to the leg. And that line of Talbot, Norris, and Chamberlain combined. Chamberlain, because Goodison was kind of suffering with that injury, was left all alone. And he's able just to knock it in from the right hand side past Day. A bit unfortunate because um, it's like a five and four because uh, Goodison couldn't move then, could he? Yeah, you could see him trying to uh, pick Chamberlain up, but he just wasn't able to move. He took a shot in the kind of side or the back of the leg and he's got a dead leg there. But with 3.34 to go in the first period, Lightning tied up and it's uh, looking for his options. Chamberlain passed it back to him. He's going to knock it up to the point. No one down on this left hand side. That's right, where Stewart right. would be. Stewart comes in there now. Stuart and Jameson just swapping over now. Jameson's going to look to thread something through, and that's that kind of technique you were saying that Weaver and Silverthorne are so good at. It's that light shot, they look to place it, look for the tip in, and look for that kind of accuracy rather than the big shot. And here's Jameson in the slot, lays it off. Lystrom has a go. Chamberlain can't oh. quite get it through, and Day just about manages to get his hands over it. He saw it, I think he fluffed it as he hit the puck, and he went under his stick. Yeah. If you've got full contact, that's in the back of the net. That's yeah. it. And Lystrom gives it away. Silverthorne just picks it up and he just knocks it down. It's gone the full length of the ice and that'll do it for the first period. So, at the end of the first period, that is MK Lightning 1, Telford Tigers 1. Goals from Aston, who's been a nuisance for the Lightning all through that first period. Cancelled out by a marker for Bobby Chamberlain. Lightning will be back after the break with... 55 seconds of power play after uh, 
Uh, Jake Price uh, for Lysha. Mitchell Lysha. King brings over the blue line now. Dangerous Mitchell King. He's uh, a good player. Chamberlain now coming over the blue line for Lightning. He's got Martelli aims to slide it through to him. Chamberlain can't quite get his stick down, but Martelli's brought it up. Martelli looks to centre it, but he eventually gives it away. And here come Telford again. Silverthorne, so tricky going around there, but there's that man Martelli again. He's coming up with three on two now. Martelli looking for Talbot in the centre, tries to slide it through. And Talbot's got it. That was Martelli brought I mean, it all Martelli's the way. Martelli's got it. Was I mean, it Martelli put it in himself? Sammy got it. I know Martelli had the puck as he brought out the left. It looked like he might have slipped it forwards and slipped into the slot there. Yeah, a lot of patience to wait for the body to go down and then come back. He did. That was quite quite forwards play there. He almost uh, you know brought it round in, and that's a go-ahead goal for Lightning. Already over eight minutes gone in this period. It's going so quickly. This game feels like, um, but two-one. That goal was made by Martelli. He had a couple of plays in a row there, and he kind of recycled his own puck and then got those wheels moving down that fast, uh, that far side from us, knocks it back, gives some room to, room to Cowley there, and Lystrom brings it in. Lystrom taking out the play a little bit, a spinning pirouette as the two players kind of pick each other up. Stewart on the boards, drops it back to Ben Russell. Ben deserves Good a shot, shot here, great shot. shot, great great height, has another one. Again, Day's there, and, La and Cowley's there with the rebound. Ben Russell had two shots. He was straight in there, really intelligent shots. He hit the target, he created that chance, and Cowley was there to pick up the second helping. We were speaking about in the first period about having guys in front of the net. They can't see it. Good shot from the top. It could get through. The main point of the D-man is get that puck through. You can't hit leg pads, and there you go. You rebound goal. And the thing I loved about that, if he'd have missed the target, if he'd have put it high, if he'd been going too far to the sides, that puck would have ended up in the corners. Yeah, it, the play, the play, play so would have been quick. over. Yeah, you, you, as a D-man coming in, you need to make sure you either hit the net. If you don't hit the net, go short side, because then you don't go way around the right. If you go to uh, make the play, drops it down to Silverthorne. What a combination that is, as McKenzie picks it up. Ben Russell there. And here comes Talbot, no. and they just run out of time. That was going to be an odd man rush. Talbot and Norris, that classic combination, were in two on one. So good. we finished the, the period, and what a good period it was for Lightning. They've uh, scored two, conceded none, making it 3-1. They're going to have a little bit, just 14 seconds or so of power play after their penalty ends. We're going to have a minute of... Uh, four on four when we get back to the third period. But so Lightning not turn it over, especially as the shot went wide. And Norris here will look, uh, look for his options. He goes down low, Talbot tries to bring it in, but that's the, uh, that's the danger of the short end as McKinney short comes line. through. And McKinney beats, uh, beats Headley to his right and makes it three to two. McKinney came right out. It was an odd man rush. And the defenseman did the right thing, didn't commit himself in. But in the end, McKinney decided, I'm going to go it alone. It's a, great, it. it's a great shot on it. It's right under his blocker. Yeah. Headley looked like he uh, might want that one back in his own mind. But it was a good shot. And it was tricky because they had to keep their uh, eyes open to the options of sliding it across. So difficult to get the puck off. jameson has got it here. He's going to look for someone uh, in the slot to kind of thread it through to. But he doesn't find anyone. Lystrom has to pick it up again. Lightning have got just one man up on the uh, blue line now, so no real options to go backwards. But Lystrom now finds Jameson, who's dropped back there. Oh. And Jameson from the blue line! <laughs> Lightning worked that goal really well. Traffic, went, traffic went, again. Went back to the point, Jameson's there, and a simple shot almost. It was a simple little snapshot from the blue line. We, we couldn't see from our angle, but there must have been traffic in front of Day because Day would normally save those all night. What do you think? I think that's Lee, Lee needs to shoot the puck more. That's what happens when Jameson shoots the puck. Big guy, he's got a wicked shot, shoot the puck. Like, you got traffic, shoot it. There you go. And that goes in. Lightning need to clear this, and Stewart's got it, and Stewart just hits it up the ice. I mean, he was hoping uh, the goalie had been pulled there, I think, that's but it's many, a little, little yeah. early for that. That was way too many men yeah, on the ice. That was too many men. That's about uh, seven guys on the ice. Yeah. Well, Milton did change. have the same, so. And, uh, and there's Weaver. A huge shot. You can't leave him uh, in that position in the high slot. Picked his, slot, uh, picked his uh, spot in the goal. There's a reason why this guy scored so many points over his uh, long career. A very long career. Weaver was in Coventry when I got there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I watched... Uh, Weaver as, you know, a junior playing for Durham, scoring like a million points a season. 
and uh, at 44 years old, assistant captain, he's the guy we're talking about, quarterback in the play on the ice. There. But there'll be a dangerous face-off in the lightning end zone, nine seconds to go. Day is on the bench. Telford will have six players. Crucial draw to win here now. I think they'll put Weaver. Yeah, Weaver's on the top. They're going to try to win back to Weaver, and he's making a clap, I guess. So Weaver literally stood there, pointing where he wants the players around They're him. They're making traffic for him to rip it. And, it all, right and this is like a uh, shotgun in American football here. They're going to yeah, crush the goalie. Uh, pressure on Cowley now to win this draw. If Cowley gets it back in the corner, it's, it's probably good, okay, right? Good play there by uh, Seven, Leisha. six, five, four. Lightning tied up. Three, two, and one second. And that is a fantastic win for your All in Black, Milton Keynes Lightning. Now that was a big win for Lightning. 4-3 over Telford Tigers, of course. And after the game, we caught up with Lightning head coach, Lewis Clifford. Cliff, a 4-3 win over Telford Tigers. I mean, that game had echoes of the games we used to have against Telford in the past. It was pretty much end-to-end, -end. but that's a big win. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, any time you, you get a win against Telford, you know, it's, um, it, it has to be viewed as a positive. Yeah, any win's a positive, but, you know, they're a really, really good team. You know, well-organised. They've got guys on their team that play situations really well. Um, you know, I think it was probably a little closer just at the end there. I think... We would have been happy with a 4-2 finish there. I think we got ahead of ourselves a little bit on that last penalty kill um, and let them score another one, which probably made the game a little closer than it should have been just to finish off there. But for probably, what, 50-odd minutes, could have gone either way. And, you know, <clears throat> from a coaching point of view, not amazing. For a hockey fan point of, view, point of view, I'm sure they really enjoyed watching that. Over 1,600 people in this barn tonight, and boy, oh boy, did they make some noise. Yeah, they did. They, uh, you ask me the same question every week. Like, they always do. You know, the crowds have been really good, you know, um, really since the start of the, the season, but they've been growing ever so slightly. And, you know, it does get to the point where I'm, you, know, you can hear from my voice that I'm having to really shout just to talk to the guys on the bench. So, yeah, the, the, the noise is phenomenal. And, it, like, what, you know, if anyone ever wonders, it does make a huge difference to the boys. You had Jordan Headley guesting for us tonight. Um, was, what was the reason about that? I mean, obviously Coventry haven't got a game because their ice plant is down. But that's just, is that just to give the other guys just, just a rest? No, uh, Smits is struggling with something at the moment. Um, he's um, had a re recurrence of something that you know popped up earlier in the season. And we were hoping if we give him a whole weekend off um, and maybe one of the practice sessions in the week off, hopefully he'll be OK again by next week. But fantastic. You know, Heads is a local guy. We all know him. We all love him that he's willing to, to do that on a night off for us, um, you know, and uh, and he kept us in the game massively at certain points. So another thing that came out tonight, the uh, the young lad Jake who was uh, who had an appeal dur during this week and obviously Ben Russell got involved in it. Over 300 selection boxes provided by the, the Milton Keys Lightning fans. That's absolutely phenomenal. Just goes to show what a club this is. Yeah, it does. You know, Benny brought it to us uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, and, you know, Benny, Benny's got a big heart, you know, he's, he's a top lad and he just saw it on Facebook and he was like, you know, so could we help this kid? And the answer, of course, was, yeah, of course we can help him, you know. We know that our fans always get behind things like that and the boys filled up a massive box of selection boxes before the game and we took them around to add to the pile. And, you know, um, what an inspirational young lad, you know, he came in the room before, he was a bit shy, but he came and met all the boys and... Um, you know, like for someone so young to want to do something so nice for other people it is really, um, you know, probably teaches all of us a lesson about how we should probably live our lives. Another tough road game tomorrow. What do you say to the boys after that? What, what were you saying to the guys in the locker room after that game? Uh, I sensed a little bit of disappointment after that game. And actually, you know what? A win's a win is a win. They're all worth the same amount of points. Um, we can't dwell on, you know, that one or two situations that... that Made, you know, made the game more comfortable for Telford than we probably should have allowed it to be. We've just got to get back on the horse and, and carry on tomorrow and go and try and get another two points. Brilliant. Well, as normal, thanks for talking to us, Cliff, and uh, go well tomorrow. Cheers, Chris. Well, thanks once again to Lewis Clifford for taking the time to chat to us after the game. And thank you to the Milton Keynes fans, the Milton Keynes ice hockey family. Jake's appeal for his selection boxes you supplied over 320 selection boxes for Jake's appeal. That's brilliant going. Thank you so much from everybody here at the club and, of course, Jake as well. Another great crowd as well. 1,600 people in the barn tonight. Don't forget, it's a Sunday game next week. All the details are on the Lightning social media and on the webpage, of course. 
It's Basingstoke Bison there in town. We'll see you then. Have a great week.